And this is actually a question from an HSC exam, and uh, it's yeah, it's a it's a sneaky one, right? So. What do we do with this? Um, it says find the shaded area, again, and you get given the equation of this curve, y equals it's the natural log, and then you get given a couple of boundaries, one to three. So how do we deal with this? Well, from the outset, um, the first thing that you might want to do is say, oh, this isn't, what's so complicated, okay? This is an area under a curve. I know how to deal with those, so I'm going to integrate. They even give me the boundaries, how kind of them. I'm going to go from 1 to 3, and well, what's the thing I'm integrating? It's log x with respect to x. Now at this point, if you are a clever advanced student, you start scratching your head, because this is not a function that you are supposed to know how to integrate. Now you can actually integrate it. There are ways, um, you know, we, we generally reserve those ways for extension to students, but I'll tell you what most students in the exam do instead of doing this correctly. Don't write this down, please. Um, they say, oh, log x, calculus. I know what to do with log x. It's one over x. And then they go from one to three and they're like, wow, what was so hard about this question? This is no big deal, okay? Now the problem here is the integral of log x is not one over x. The derivative of log x is one over x. So a classic error that we often make, I've made it many times in the past, is we've differentiated instead of integrating. Turns out, the integral of log x is rather more involved and challenging, which is why, like I said, you kind of need some extension to techniques to deal with it. Okay, not impossible, but uh, I'd, ra I'd rather not do it this way, okay? So what's an alternative way to solve this problem using the knowledge that we've developed today? Well, have a think. In the first half of the lesson, we were looking at areas bounded by the x-axis. I just went and spent a lot of effort helping you develop an understanding of areas bounded to a different axis, the y-axis. How can that knowledge help me here? Have a think. Look at the graph closely, and if you haven't already, by the way, let me just um, buy you a bit of time to draw this thing for yourself because you absolutely do need a bit of a drawing. It's not a parabola, you're exactly right, so I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to use exactly the same technique that I used before, but I am going to use something related to that. Have a think, have a think. We're going to combine, sort of, the, the two pieces of um, the two methods we looked at last time. Okay, Yvonne's, Yvonne's on the right track, right? Let's, let's have a think about this, okay? What have we just determined? The area under the curve is not easy to work out directly. The area bounded to the x-axis. So how can I say, for example, have an area bounded to the y-axis that might help me? Well, let's have a look over here, right? If I worked out, let's put in, uh, here we go. If I put in an extra line in here, and if you want to on your diagram, I'd encourage you to do something similar. If I put in an extra line over here and then say, wait a second, I can work out, oh, I'll just stay on, stay on red. I can work out this area over here because it's bounded to the y-axis. See that? It's bounded between my y equals log x and it goes all the way over to the left to the y-axis here. Okay, this area which I've enclosed in red this I can work out using the method above. I just need to be able to do those three things. Number one, change it so that it's with respect to y, not x. Change it so it doesn't look like y in terms of x, but x in terms of y, and then get the right boundaries, right? I'm not bound integrating from one to three anymore. Those are x boundaries. I need some y boundaries to go with that. So let's have a go at doing this, okay? I'm gonna say the area equals. Now again, I'm going to start from right to left, even though that seems a bit backwards, but it's the easiest way to go about this. The first thing is, instead of writing an integral with respect to x, I'm going to write an integral with respect to y. Okay? No big dramatic change, so that part's done. Tick. Now I focus on the next part, right? That's this log x, right? This is in terms of x. How do I get it in terms of y? Well, if I have y equals log x, what would I do to change the subject? Remember, this is log base e of x, right? So as Yvonne put in the comments, I can convert this into an exponential. Right now, y is the subject, but I can make x the subject if I rephrase this in terms of exponentials, powers, and all that kind of thing instead of as a log. Um, so what I can do is I can say, rearranging, um, this, the way I think about it is, this base becomes the base of the new equation, which is 
E. And then the X's and the Y's, they kind of switch around, right? So this Y is the power and X is the new subject. So this guy here, I now have remade um, the equation so that X is the subject and not Y. So instead of writing log X, I'm going to write e to the power of y. And this is making me smile because I'm like, I love integrating e to the y. You don't have to do very much to it. It's really simple, right? So step one, dx turns into dy. Step two, that log x, I get it in terms of y, so it's now e to the power of y. The last step is, let me get these arrows out of the way because it's a bit messy. I need to look at these boundaries, right? These guys, oops, wrong color. These guys over here, one and three, are no longer relevant to me. I need to know what are the y boundaries here. Okay, now the lower boundary is easy, right? Where does this Y area start from at the bottom? Have a look, you guys can tell me the value right here. What is this value? It's zero, very good. And Sasha, you've already gone to the next step. So I want the upper boundary, which is up here. It's a Y value, but Y is equal to log X, remember? So I just need the X value over here that gives me that Y value. And I know what that X value is. It's three. So if x equals three, then y will equal natural log of three. Okay, so that's my lower boundary and that's my upper boundary. So now when I come over to here, I'm integrating from naught to log three. So remember, this thing here gives us the red area. In fact, I might even say that this is the red area. It's not the actual shaded area. We'll come to that in my combine and uh, conclude step. Okay, let's go ahead. We've done enough work. Let's work out what this thing is. The integral of e to the y is just going to be, thankfully, e to the y from naught to log three. And uh, this is one of those examples where it's going to pay to make sure that you don't just um, say when you get zero, you just you, when you it substitute zero, you don't just get zero. This is e to the power of zero, right? So you're not just gonna get zero. We get e to the power of log three, take away e to the power of zero, okay? Now, um, if you have a look at this e to the log three business, maybe you're like, oh, my brain is confused. Um, you can do a couple of things here. Number one, um, your calculator will help you. It'll just evaluate this for you if you want. Um, but if you think back to your log laws, um, one of the log laws which is not very well known, it's not commonly used, is e to the power of log x equals x. It's, uh, it's not common, but you can prove this quite easy to yourself by rearranging this exponential equation into a log equation, right? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take logs of both sides, um, which gives me this. And then I notice that this power up here, I can move in, that's a terrible color, sorry. Uh, this power here, I can move it out of the front using my log law. So log x outside the front of log e equals log x. So, hold on, no, sorry, did I do that right? Yeah, I did do that right, okay. So you can see that these two things are going to be equal. So e to the power of log three, let me move this out of the way because it's in the way of my working. There we go, shrink you down to size. e to the power of log three is going to just be three. And then e to the power of zero, as a lot of people said, is just going to be one. So this guy is two, which is kind of, by the way, a bit mysterious, right? This weird looking, like, this is the red area that we were just working out, right? This weird, bizarre shape, which is like got this funny curve cut out of it. It ends up being such a simple number. It's just two, okay? Now that's the red area. To work out the shaded area, uh, let's do it over here. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. The shaded area is going to be that rectangle take away the red area, the one we just worked out. In fact, I'm even gonna write that. It's the rectangle and I'm going to subtract the red area. So to work out a rectangle, we need length times breadth. Um, you can see the breadth is pretty straightforward. It's just three, right? Um, so I'll write that three. What's the height or the, uh, the length of this? Well, it's from naught to log three. So it's log three. There's the rectangle, done, right there. And then the red area we just worked out was two. So it's three log three, take away two. And I would conclude by saying the area with units, so it's three log three, take away two units squared. So this, whoopsie daisy, this is a tough question, right? There was a lot to it. You had to think carefully about how you would approach it. Um, and the trap for young players is to just say, oh, it's log X and I can 
integrate that when you're actually differentiating. So it's, uh, it's, it's almost designed to try and see if you really know what you're talking about. But that's why these techniques, integrating with respect to Y and getting other areas are so handy because they can help you work out a wide variety of questions.